and with edge mirrors cameras are always much more used by many people. And it's not only for their lightness and compactness, as many say. In this video, I'm gonna analyze the most important feature of a mirrorless camera in wildlife photography. But before going on, tell me if you're interested in wildlife and, and what topic you would like to face, maybe subscribe to my channel to help me to make always more videos. So let's get started. Okay, now I think everybody knows what are a mirrorless camera. If you don't know them, I'm gonna explain you briefly. A mirrorless camera is a digital camera without the mirror. Okay, the arm is much more complex and speaking like that, it could be quite difficult to com but comparing a traditional DSLR camera with a mirrorless camera, the main difference is that, is that in DSLR cameras, the light coming from the lens is reflected by a mirror to a pentaprism and finally to the optical viewfinder. When you shot, the mirror moves up, so uh, the light goes uh, to the sensor in order to save your image. In mirrorless cameras, the light coming from the lens are directly to the sensor and then it's replicated in the electronic viewfinder. So in mirrorless cameras, there isn't the step to move the mirror. What does it mean? Okay, first of all, less weight, of course. Looking at the mirrorless cameras, it's clear that it's more than a DSLR camera due to their lack of the mirror and the pentaprism, as well as the mechanics for moving the mirror. And this is an advantage if you expect to make long travels with a lot of photographic stuff. This is also true because usually mirrorless cameras don't have the battery grip integrated in the body, but you have to buy them separately. But also in that case, the combination of a mirrorless body and the battery grip is always lighter than a flagship DSLR, like the Canon 1DX Mark III or the Nikon D6, or the last and just announced Canon EOS uh, R3, that actually is a mirrorless camera, but that has the battery grip integrated in the body. Just to make a comparison, then I'm gonna show you two DSLR flagship cameras and a mirrorless in terms of weight. Only speak of the body, we have 1 kg and 250 g for Canon, 1 kg and 450 g for Nikon, and uh, 737 grams for Sony. But if you add the battery grip for the Sony, you have one kilogram and 27 grams in total. Now, we're going to compare the same camera with a typical lens for wildlife photography, the 600 mm f4 lens. So in this case, we have for Canon, one kilogram and 250 grams for the camera and two, three kilograms and 50 grams for the lens. And in total, they are four kilograms and 300 grams for Nikon, 1 kg for, uh, 450 grams for the camera and 3 uh, kilograms and 810 gr uh, grams for the lens and in total we are 5 kg and 260 grams for the Sony we have 1 kg and 27 grams for the camera plus battery grip and 3 kg and 40 grams for the lens and in total they are 4 kg and 67 grams. So it's quite clear that a mirrorless system is pretty lighter than a DSLR system. So if the weight is an important aspect for you, maybe you should consider to buy a mirrorless camera without an integrated battery grip. However, I prefer the battery grip and not only for, uh, for one reason. A big disadvantage of a mirrorless camera is the big electronic consumption of the batteries due to the, uh, the EVF. And not only for that, modern mirrorless cameras have now a really good IF system with excellent tracking system as well. But also the old CAD DSLR cameras have good tracking system. So where's the difference? Where mirrorless cameras are better than the DSLR uh, cameras? The answer is but in the software. Look at the flagship DSLR cameras. You'll see a lot of settings for customizing the AF tracking system to cover every needs. The AF system are really, really powerful and thousands of professional photographers have used them and are still using those cameras for their job take stunning images, also in wildlife photography. So how mirrorless cameras can be better? Okay, now with this wildlife photographer want more specific feature for wildlife, like for example to recognize animals or better to focus on animal eyes. Is it possible? Yes, of course, but only with mirrorless cameras. As I said, the AF tracking system or flagship uh, DSLR cameras 
are very powerful. Even though they don't recognize animals, they can follow them without any problem. But as far as I know, they don't recognize animals like people, neither the animal eyes. And this is a real news about mirrorless camera. The ability to recognize animal eyes and to focus on them, as you can imagine, is a huge advantage in wildlife photography, because everybody wants a perfect picture with a perfect eyes in focus. So just to summarize, we have Nikon D6, people DS, eyes yes, animal no, animal eyes no. Canon 1DX Mark III, people yes, eyes no, animal no, eh, eh, animal eyes no. Sony A1, people yes, eyes yes, animal eyes yes, animal yes, animal eyes yes. Uh, DSLR cameras can properly recognize people and follow them, but they can't rec uh, properly recognize animals even though they can follow them. And to end, they can't properly recognize animal eyes. But at least the Nikon D6 can focus on people eyes. For the Canon 1DX Mark III, I'm not sure if it can. Mirrorless camera can get every aspect I mentioned before, so with them you can follow people and animals. You can focus on people, face people and eyes people as well. And you can focus and follow animals like cats, dogs and birds and focus on their eyes. It's incredible, isn't it? Uh, despite millions of pixels of our digital sensor, we can't focus using them. But the digital sensor have a very specific AF points spread uh, on the sensor. But how many? Okay, always speaking of the same cameras, we have Canon 1DX Mark III with 191 AF, AF points, Nikon D6 with 105 AF points and find the Sony Alpha 1 with 759 AF points. Yes, 759 points that cover almost the whole sensor. And the newest Canon EOS R3 has 1053 AF points, that's incredible, I agree. But the most important aspect in this case is that with a lot of AF points you'll be able to focus in uh, using almost the whole sensor and of course pulling your subject in the whole sensor. That's much more better because you don't have to change manually or m maybe moving the camera for following a bit around the sensor or of course for a small movement of the subject. And that's too comfortable to make and make your photography life easier. And just to understand what I mean, let's watch how a modern mirrorless use the AF point to follow a bird. As I always tell, animals are scared by noises and from our shutters. Unfortunately, the SLR cars and the shutter are pretty noisy. I mean, shot in live view mode. I lost many beautiful pictures in past with my old Sony Alpha 99 uh, Mark II due to its annoying shutter. But now with mirrorless cameras it's different. And why? Because of the silent shooting. I mean, that now mirrorless cameras um, have an electronic shutter, but don't make any noise, finally. This aspect, I think, is one of the most important advantages of a mirrorless camera for wildlife photography. As I said, every noise can be an issue for animals, so we have to try to reduce everything that get uh, animals in trouble, like the shutter click. But you need to be careful, the electronic shutter has an issue, the rolling shutter. Okay, actually the rolling shutter affected every CMOS sensor, both with the mechanical shutter and with the electronic shutter, but only in particular, in particular situation, even though with electronic shutter it's likely more frequent. The rolling shutter happens during the reading of the information coming from the sensor of your camera, giving you in some situation a default image. So before giving back your new camera, maybe thinking about an issue, you have to be aware that it's normal. You don't have to worry so much. Fortunately, there are some cameras that are less affected by this problem. A camera with BSR sticked sensor, a new kind of sensor that are faster during the read, uh, the read phase. As far as I know, the only camera with a sensor like that are Sony's camera and the new Canon EOS R Mark III. Have you managed to count how many shots there were? Mm, I don't think, but there were a lot. As I say many times, an eye bars rate is always useful in wildlife photography because it allows you to have more chance to get the right picture, mostly with animals in movement. But let's see some comparison chart. 
Okay, it's quite obvious that mirrorless camera wins and if you join 20 or 30 FPS with a silent shooting, you'll have the perfect camera for wildlife photography. That way you'll be pretty sure to capture the right moment of your favorite animal and focusing their eyes. Okay guys, it's time to come to a conclusion. For me it's obvious, obvious that mirrorless cameras have many advantages in comparison with DSLR cameras. Be careful, I'm not saying that these one are bad cameras, I'm only saying that now there is a new choice, a better choice given by mirrorless cameras. Someone could say that now it's too easy to make wildlife photography, and maybe they're right. But as always, the user makes the difference. Of course, mirrorless cameras are imperfect. As I said before, they, are, they consume a lot of electricity more than the DSLR cameras, so you need more extra batteries in some situation, and the rolling shutter is more frequent. Okay, I think it isn't the end of the, of the world, but they are always problem. For the batteries, I always prefer to use a battery grip, even though I had to spend more than I expected. And that is another bad aspect of mirror cameras. The price that now is a bit higher than DSLR cameras, and I'm not only consider the flagship also for a, a other kind of camera. Okay, it's time to go. Let me know what you think about mirrorless cameras. Maybe writing something in the comment section below. And don't forget to respect the nature. As always, take care and I hope to see you really soon. Bye bye.